Hey, how's it going? It's Tyler Walton from Tyler Walton Music, and I'm here today to talk about a commission that I received uh, about October of last year from a fellow co-worker of mine. He, he approached me and was like, hey, I know you do music. I used to be in a band, and I have these old uh, tape recordings I converted to WAV files. Can you remaster them for me, and I'll show my guys. He used to be in a late 80s, early 90s band, and uh, essentially it's like a thrashy, proggy, kind of shred style, hard rock metal band, stellar music. And so I took on the commission and, and uh, here we are a year later, I finally talked him into kind of letting me uh, do a production breakdown of it. So Eric, when you see this, I, I appreciate you for letting me do this. Uh, the band is called Crystal Myth and the song is called Abstract Mind Attack. I've recorded this. This is like my third attempt at recording this. The first two were with camera. The camera kept dropping frames. Then Streamlabs wasn't recording the DAW audio on like a 45 minute video. So I don't want to waste any time. I want to jump right into this uh, and get right to it. So let's just hit play and listen to a little bit of it and then we'll break down what is going on. stop right there so uh, a couple of things stylistically speaking you know they as you can hear here here uh these guys shred uh it's it's very much indicative of that time period and a couple of notes that i was given when i started this is we wanted to have loud music and they were going for that uh i, I don't know what the term is but if you listen to old metallica like pre and justice for all so like master of puppets and back uh so master of puppets ride the lightning uh and stuff like that like you know that that kind of vocal clarity that james hetfield had where it was a little bit quieter than the music and it had a, a sound to it i don't know what that sound technically is called but if you're familiar with those tracks like listen to uh creeping death off of ride the lightning for instance uh that's like the the vocal style uh, or the sound quality that I was requested to try to emulate. So I, I gave it my best attempt. It was kind of tricky. Really, it's just a, a, a volume thing. I had to make the music louder. Um, there's really not nothing specific that we're doing with the EQ, but we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll get into that. So right off the top, I'm I'm just gonna go straight down. So uh, and then we can kind of a b the original. As you can see, it's just a brick wall of dynamics here. And here you can kind of see how there is some variation and whatnot. So let's just go right down the top, like top down, and then we'll we'll get right into it. So let's talk about the drums. So the drums were interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, I'm going to open up the uh, – here we go. So let's just play back the drums here, and then uh, we'll talk about what we got going on here.
so we have two sets of drum stems here. We have our regular drums and we have our drum overheads. So um, I wasn't informed on what microphones were used. I don't know what microphones were used. My guess is they were either ribbon mics or SM57s. I, I can't confirm this. What I do know is the placement of the mics. So for the the drum stem, there was a mic put inside the the uh, inside the bass drum inside of it. Um, there was a mic put right above the snare, um, all the toms, and then uh, no mics were put. They like they didn't mic the cymbals. They let the cymbals kind of bleed into the other microphones, and then the overheads they kept uh, like. They used microphone stands. They kind of had to DIY this. So they used microphone stands that were, quote, he said they put microphone stands on top of like chairs and then position them over top of the drum set because they didn't have, uh, they, they didn't have like the apparatus or the, like the ability to hang them from the, from the ceiling or anything like that to get like that overhead sound. So then they, they just kind of had to DIY that. Um, again, like, I, I don't know what mics they were. My If I had to guess, they're probably budget ribbon mics and budget SM57s. But that's that's just a guess and that's speculation. I, I wouldn't take my word on that one. Um, but uh, essentially what we wanted to do is we wanted to make the drums punchy to stand out. I wanted that kick to really smack. And then, uh, and then let that, that snare kind of breathe a little bit because I, like, I personally like the snare sound. So uh, that's what we did here. Is we'll play it back. Yeah, so just kind of let the, let, let the snare breathe and kind of get that kick really punchy. There's a lot of reverb on this, and you can tell that they used kind of like a DIY overhead, uh, overhead solution because if you look at my mix here, my mixers here, I got no reverb. I'm using Ozone 8, uh, and then I have two turned off compressors, which I decided to stop. I, I didn't want to run the compressors independently, so I bust them all over here to a, a separate auxiliary track, uh, and we'll talk about that here in just a second, but there's no reverb on the uh drums like artificially from me all the reverb that you're hearing is from the space that they were recording in which was just a garage so i was uh kind of blown away by how spacious it kind of sounded i'm cool with it i think it's like the it, it really lends itself to the to like that style of that time period where you know nothing is it's not hyper quantized hyper sterilized in a controlled ice isolated environment and everything like that. So let's go into these uh, to these um, EQs. So the EQ is going to be the same for the drums and the drum overheads for the most part. Let me see. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, basically, what we did here, you, you can see up here where it says HIV drums. There's another song down the track list called HIV. We we labored over these drums for a while. These are probably like the second most difficult things to work on besides the vocals. Uh, and oftentimes we would get to a point and then we would get to a different song and find something else that we like. They try to go back and fit ret retrofit it. My apologies for the yawn. So really all I wanted to do here, if, if, if you've paid attention to how I produce in the past, and seen any of my other videos or walkthroughs and stuff that I do. Uh, I'm a big fan of just creating space and letting letting the instruments do their thing. The instruments sound good. They're using good instruments. They're good musicians. I don't want to throw a, a slick of paint over top of that or shine it up or anything like that. I just want to give them the clarity and the space to do what, they, what they're doing and let, and let that speak for itself. So what we did is we did a small cut here just to kind of bring it back because this like it was peaking really hard and then just kind of make tiny cuts here to kind of level it down no, nothing too crazy
tell there. It, it's not super noticeable, but it is there. Um, we're kind of bringing it down just a little bit, just a little bit, and doing like a little, like a tiny little high pass up here. Nothing too crazy. Likewise with the drum overheads, it's no different. We'll play this back. Bring this out. Bring these off. like that and then we bust over to this auxiliary neutron 2 which is isotopes audio suite uh, and this is our compressor I just wanted to keep the beater on the bass drum that's really like my big my big uh, plan for the compressor I just wanted to keep punchy. we use a preset here called slow parallel drums we use a preset here called slow parallel drums and then from there we just kind of tweaked a little bit. We kept the threshold kind of, kind of, kind of high at minus 32. Uh, the gain I gained it up just a just a skosh, and then. Uh, this is off. A little more clarity, a little punchier. gives that bass drum just a little bit more kick to it and then we panned we panned everything kind of yeah so it's uh it's a little hard to see here but uh i don't know why those are gone but anyway um yeah as you can hear here 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 the english language is fun drums are far left overheads are right We just wanted to kind of create a space. So uh, moving on to the bass. Um, again, we just wanted to kind of give these people some, like the the bass, the bassist is very talented. And uh, they were playing a, they're playing an Ibanez bass into a Mesa Boogie head, uh, a Mesa bass head. Um, I don't know which one. And then he said it was mic'd up with, he believes it was an SM57, but he, he doesn't know for sure. Uh, so this is what, what this sounds like. Okay, so let, let's just talk about this really fast before we get into the mix. Um, right here, this little little m melody line here, uh, we wanted to kind of bring that up and highlight that with everything else. Uh, you have the guitars are playing like these big lush chords, and then we wanted the, the movement in that melody to be in the bass there. And then up here, there's another, another one yeah, right here. So... Let me unmute this. So he's going to start singing. That's going to go into like kind of like a, a refrain into like the chorus. And it's he's just pedaling down really hard on that on that note. So those are two of the big things, and then we have another boost right up here before the guitar solos come in. Oh, wrong button. Again, we're pedaling hard.
Yep. Okay, cool. So that's that's like those are like the big like highlighted points that we're going to talk about with the base. Uh, and then the uh, we, we kept the pan dead center because it's just it's single tracks. So we didn't want to do anything crazy. Okay, so this one again, we're using another base preset that we ended up tweaking around and playing with on a later track that we'll talk about. This one we kind of went a little hog wild with. We did we did the same high pass up here just to create some space, and then we did a little bit of a, a low pass up here to create some more space, and then we just did. Some I wanted to boost it right here. We did this boost right around uh, what was it at one forty one? Well, about about one forty, and uh, I felt like especially on these like melody parts right here, uh, like this range was just really. Um, like where it's wanting to sit so i just wanted to kind of boost it just a tiny bit just to give it a little bit more presence and let it stand out amongst all the all the other noise and then on the uh compressor Again, we're using another preset, and then we're tweaking everything down about minus 31, almost 32. Then I didn't gain anything out. Just a little, little brighter, a little louder. Maybe a little bit more body. Like that. Okay, um, moving on to the guitars. I'm kind of speeding this up because the last one that I did, I did took like 45 minutes and it was a lot of waffling. Okay, so the guitars. Um, okay, these are these are crazy. So let's back this up to the beginning. So they were recorded on a Jackson guitar. Uh, I don't. He he couldn't tell me what the model was. It was a Jackson going into a Mesa Boogie uh, dual rectifier from that time period into a Mesa Boogie four by twelve. Um, so this one we didn't do any compression on. We just wanted to talk about, uh, we just wanted to do some EQ and, uh, that's exactly what we did. So myth Axe, the myth Axe preset really just turned out to be what we use for the entire project. So as we go through these, through these tracks, you're going to see that they kind of, they bear resemblance to the same. And really what we're going to be talking about instead is going to be like the leveling and how we pan stuff and how we did some creative automation to kind of bring other parts up to the forefront and down and everything like that. Uh, we really just wanted to let the, the guitar tone was solid. Like it's such a killer guitar tone. So we just did a tiny little bit of high pass to take some of that low end out um, to make room for the, for the drums and the bass and then let everything else kind of, kind of sing. It was really, really kind of peaking over here at the uh, 186, 185 mark. And then beyond that, I just want the guitars to sound as natural and as clean as I possibly can. I didn't want to do anything crazy with it. So there's no reverb, no compression, no other effects. I put a level. I don't know why I put a level meter on this. I, Thinking back, I was trying to like figure out why I did that. And I don't know why I did that. Especially since it's only on that one and not on a guitar too. Um, but yeah, so that's... <laughs> okay so let's talk about the guitar lead because this was a little trickier <laughs> uh let's find out where we are here okay open this up so there was uh there were some sounds right here that kept popping in and out and i i don't know what they were so I had to kind of do a cut and then a crossfade. And even with the crossfade, we still had a pretty hard pop. So I, I automated it all the way down to infinity and then brought it right back up like a hard, uh, like a drop off and then a hard back up to minus one. So that's why that, that cut and crossfades there. Well, let's talk about this guitar solo. 
guitar solo is a little, a little messy. It was a little bit of work. But uh, um, the uh, the trick here was to kind of bring out some of the notes that are getting kind of lost in the mud of the shredding, especially toward that last little end run there. So when we go to the e, uh, if we go to the EQ, um, we're not obviously we're not using this. This was we really wanted just to kind of bring stuff down one because the frequencies are really high. This this band up here, the reason why it's so steep at mine at, at three point seven is because it was piercing on the ears. And then we just kind of wanted to bring down some of the, the high end and the low end and just kind of regulate is kind of the term that I would use because it was really peaking all over the place. This was a bit of a, a pain in the neck to kind of get down. And I almost put a limiter on it. Um, so there's that. Um, we, did, we did that and then I compressed it just to kind of bring out some, some warmth, obviously. And then... Excuse me, and then just kind of let the let the guitar solo speak for itself. You can kind of hear the vocals in there. So we did that, and then I saved this as a guitar, as the guitar lead. So, uh, yeah, because that guitar, that that lead guitar section in all the other songs is equally as insane. So um, that's what we did there, uh, and then we kept that one dead center because it's not it's not dual tracked. So moving on, uh, let's get down to the last like super extreme section here, which is the vocals. I'm just going to use this opening stanza right here to, for us to work. Memories seem blank to my parents left. Okay, so let's talk about the harmonies before we get into this giant stack of plugins here. So we use those zone 8. Now, these are going to be the same uh, for both harms 1 and 2, right? Uh, and this is pretty much consistent across the whole album. Um... Again, we wanted, I don't want to put paint over anything. I don't want to manipulate anything and make it sound like it doesn't naturally sound like. If he's singing to you in the room, this is what I want this to sound like. And because of that, I just did some did, did some subtractive EQ to kind of bring the peaks down, and that's really just about it. And then, of course, the high pass. Um, there's that. And then we did the Neutron 2 just to compress it down, give him a good like a vent like i i took i took this preset i was playing with it and i couldn't quite get what i wanted so i used this preset here moderate male vocal uh to kind of give it that vintage sound which is what i was trying to go for with that old metallica and i i just couldn't figure it out so i kind of had to swallow my pride and go with this preset you know and that's something i i hope to work work on i you know i'm i'm I really want to work on some more production type projects uh going into 2022 in the summer of 2022 and uh, really just try to develop as a producer. This is my very first time doing any type of production, uh, like at this, on, on this type of stuff. Uh, and it was a great learning experience. Um, and, you know, using these presets, I know some people will be like, blah, don't use the presets. But for what it's worth, I, I feel like I got a good uh, bang for my buck out of this one. Uh, and that's mimicked on uh, Harms 2. And then we added a delay, not a, a crazy one. Let me just go ahead. Do that. Let's back this up. I'm gonna turn it off and turn it back on. Memory seem blank. Okay. It's pretty dry in your face. This is what it sounds like with the delay. Memory seem blank. 
So it's really not even like a crazy delay. It's kind of like you're singing into a microphone kind of delay. Just want to give it some time, a little bit of time-based processing. Nothing too crazy. The mix, as you can see, is super low. Uh, delay time is 157. We're pretty much doing 16th note delay. And then we save this as the main vox because uh, we use that on this one as well. All right, let's get down to this monster. I spent so long on this. Memories seem blank okay. to my parents. Laughing, Sean. Laughing that she was my life or just. Okay, so he's singing in a super mid range because he wants his harmonies to kind of take the high end. So the low cuts there, I'm sorry, the high passes there. We took some of these peaks down and then I brought up the high end. He's. His voice is really comfortable in that mid-range. And um, I didn't want him to sound kind of flat. He wasn't tonally flat, but like, like or pitch flat. He, he wasn't flat like in terms of pitch. He was, he was good there. But tonally, he kind of, like the recording itself was kind of flat. So, and, and I, I don't chalk that up to bad recording. I chalk that up to the quality of the recording given the time period and then being converted to a wave file from tape. So, because I, I think Eric told me they were recording on Tascams. I mean, come on. So, we brought, we, I jumped this up pretty high just to kind of highlight that high end. For just a big time. And you can see even with the no, peaked up here, how low it's, it's not even going above zero. Not near them laughing in my Brain. So imagine that. And then I had to do a lot of like corrective. This is a de to so kind of stop the hard S sounds. This is a, a de to kind of stop the pop sounds, like the puss and the tuss. Uh, I tried a reverb. It didn't sound good. It's turned off. Uh, compressed it just like these ones, and then we put the same delay on. And that's really the gist of it there. These two here are panned. Plus and minus 10 just to give a little bit of space. Memories seem blank to my parents. There's a thing up here. I don't know why what this is. Oh, there's a weird pan. I don't, let's see. What did I do here? I got something going on here. One second. Let's see what this is. I am the chosen from hell I have been sent Let the love of God get your mind It's permanently bent This is of my name Oh, okay, that's right I forgot So there was like that crashing sound Because they were recording on a task cam A lot of the sound effects stuff Which I'm going to talk about here to, to close this out a lot of these uh, sound effects stuff like that, there's a siren and an explosion. They were kind of had to splice it onto other tapes just to make work, you know, because they, they didn't have the, you know, the ability to run as many tracks as they wanted to. Like if I want to put 100 tracks on this, I can just put 100 tracks on this. That wasn't the case back then. Um, so there's that. Now let's look at these quick things here. I didn't do anything with these, obviously. There's no point to these are just sound effects. I just panned them hard. Here we go. Left to right pan, dynamic, and then that goes into that. And then this is actually synced up, if I'm not mistaken, with the drums. So, there, like that. And that does it. That's uh, that's the first song, Abstract Mind Attack. Let's go ahead and just A, B the, uh, the original, and you can kind of hear the difference.
so it's quieter by nature and that's by design and i just wanted to kind of give the bass a little bit more space and stuff like that so uh yeah that's the first one we'll we'll press it forward with the next few tracks and i will see you there thank you for watching if you have any questions please let me know in the comments um i'm looking forward to doing more production this is my first time doing production at this kind of scale uh and i feel like it was a great learning experience and i learned a lot and i still have a lot to learn um you know, it's it's crazy. It's going from college and learning production in college to doing it in real time. It's completely different. Uh, so it's it was it was a fantastic learning experience. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Again, my name is Tyler Walton from Tyler Walton Music. Please stay safe out there. Talk to you soon.